Same designer, different dress. No. Heart neck client. Yes. You've got a really nice long train on this. This dress is a princess dress. I'm so excited to try this dress on. What do you guys think of this one? I like this one. Damn. I like that. <laughs> I actually like it. Do you like it, Mum? Yes, I'm, I'm even surprised that I like it. Don't just like it cos I like it. I'm self-conscious about being tall. I'm also self-conscious about being plus size. Number three, can't be missed. Professional basketball player Kia Vaughn has her head in the clouds and no, it's got nothing to do with her spectacular 6'4 height. It's got everything to do with her footballer fiancé, Gary. Now, Gary and Kia have a pretty tall order for Kleinfeld to fulfill. Literally, since having a gown in Kia's statuesque height is going to be a Herculean task. My name is Kia Vaughn and I'm a professional athlete. I play for the Washington Mystics. I brought my fiancé, Gary. His opinion means a lot to me. He knows what he likes on his woman. I couldn't imagine my life without him. So do you have an idea of what you're looking for in terms of style? How tall are you? 6'4". Stand up for me. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Normal things that actually are longer in length, once I put it on, my body makes it shorter. Professional basketball player. Oh, wow. She has a beautiful body. She's very tall. How tall? She's 6'4". But the top stylists like Christiane, which Kleinfeld boasts of, are no lightweight ballerinas who fall apart at the first whiff of difficulty. Apparently, Christiane's most pressing concern is how she would reach over her to get into her dress. But in the dressing room, both Christiane and Randy have a mic drop moment as they stare in astonishment at Kia's heels, which she plans to get married in. Form fitting, um, I want it to be flowing at the bottom. Shoulderless, strapless. <laughs> You're like six <laughs> inches, yeah. Oh my so god, how am I gonna, I'm gonna get the dresses on you. She has a good like four and a half inch heel that she wants to wear. Let me feel tall and brace it, baby. These puppies are going to bring her height to a whopping seven feet and Randy is entranced. Fast forward to the first dress, which is a Panina Tourne creation, which is a definitely maybe. So this party is off to look at other possibilities. I love the dress. I love how it poofs, the jewels, the bust part. So far it's perfect. Sle uh, looked at the ticket in the back of the ticket. It says no changes because it's a Pearl D by Panina oh Tournay. It's not a Panina Tournay. This piece right here, this is all just gonna drop down to about here to accommodate the length. The dress couldn't come in a longer length. I'm just like, this is exactly what I didn't want. It's just like fell the air out of me. But this party has hit a snag before it even got started. Kia has received not one, but two bad news. A, the dress she was about to lose her heart to cannot be altered. B, most dresses can be altered three to four inches at the most, so the killer platform heels have got to be chucked out the window. This pride is a born-to-be leader, and she is willing to make the sacrifices to achieve a bigger goal, finding a dress to get married in. There's all-around agreement to the bottom of the second dress, so Kia and Christiane are looking for a dress with both upper and lower halves making the cut. The next dress by Ian Stewart has a beautiful ruffled top, which has sent Kia's pulse racing, but the dropped expression on Gary's face. What do you guys think? I thought it'd be a little longer. Do you like this one better, Gary? I like the bottom. The bottom is the really bottom. nice. I like the bottom a lot. Mom, what do you think? Yeah. Just the bottom. But the shape is beautiful, and your behind looks awesome. Same designer, different dress. No. After looking at the dress that you feel is the one, you know, it's, it's definitely no comparison. <laughs> I turned around for a split second, I saw this. <laughs> Same designer. Yeah. Wrong dress. He loves the bow, and this has a bigger bow. This has a seam here, so with a seam, you can go extra length. Yeah. It's a tragic novel without words. Fortunately, the last dress is the culmination of all of Kia's hopes and dreams is what has made this Amazon queen weak need. And fiancé Gary and mom are also left breathless at her side. This dress has left its indelible mark on everyone's hearts, and they all know it's not about to be left for anyone else's service. A day well spent indeed. My same reaction as the first dress. Immediately, you can tell that that dress is the one. I have my piggies out. <laughs> we oh, took our shoes off. My I got my piggies out. God. <laughs> How do you feel? I love this one. That right there was crazy. I love everything about the dress. What do you guys think of this one? I like this one. Damn. I like that. Are you saying yes to the dress? 
I'm saying yes to the dress. Yes! <laughs> Number two, tall and troubled. Debbie is a regular Miss Champagne, a tall, cool bottle of wine. Hello, Kirsty. Hey. Hello. Hello, lady. Hey. Hello. Hello. I'm quite anxious. This is a, a, a real fear for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Ch changing rooms. The worst thing was when she got to her teenage years because she couldn't get in anything that her friends could get into. With beautiful rich curves to go with it, but unfortunately, her mind doesn't cooperate with her eyes. To her true self-critiquing brain, her grande beauty is only good for one thing, playing a pillar holding up the ceiling of her home behind closed doors. How are you feeling? This is um, quite a big deal to be in a shopping situation. Mum's usually outside there making sure I stand in there and actually get into the clothes. I'm self-conscious about being tall. I'm also self-conscious about being plus size. The thought of venturing out into society to find a wedding dress is leaving her hyperventilating and Al and Joe are the perfect heroes for this damsel in distress. They are on a mission which is to make this beauty realize what a full and fine package she is and emerge from her cocoon like the beautiful butterfly she is. Dress number one is a showstopper, which has exposed Christy for the fraud she was trying to be, albeit innocently. Instead of the Mrs. Doubtfire self-image she had, what she is looking at in the mirror is a goddess worthy of worship. I've got my concerns. There's no arms on it. Um, so we'll have to see how it goes. Amazing, you feel beautiful. <laughs> you are beautiful. <laughs> OK, are we ready? Open your eyes. Oh, it's beautiful. Wow. It has flipped Christie's expectations on its head, but Joe and Al are not done yet with their witchcraft. They have her soon dressed in a completely different style, and this one is an absolute marvel. The wide-eyed, astonished expression on her face is telling a heartbreaking tale of what senseless words can do to a person and how and how powerful they can be. Look at it. I love it. Oh my goodness. Getting you in your dress on the day. Would you like to come get me in the dress? <laughs> oh, was that an invite? <laughs> this is the one, is this the one? This is the one. This should be the one. This is the one. An overwhelmed Kirsty has wisely decided to take a time out to deal with this new self-image and a few weeks later, she is proudly marching back in through the doors. The woman who has walked back through the doors is a warrior who has emerged from a battle with herself, a new person. Back in the dress once again, her tentative belief in her own beauty has finally been realized and she is taking it home with her to share in her happiness. Kirsty's late arrival has tested everyone's nerves, in particular Robert's who can't wait to make her his. This exchange of vows seems unneeded as the love and devotion between these two positively permeates the air. I know, but there is only so long the priest will wait for you. So we're here, we're at the church. There is no Kirsty. There's no news from Kirsty. Is Kirsty actually coming? Here she is. May Kirsty take you, Robert, to love and to cherish till death do us part. Number one. Born Beautiful, bride-to-be Helen has joined the esteemed ranks of women who have brought another life into this world. Proud moment, right? Well, she didn't know what a high price she would be paying for this definite honor as now she has to struggle with something more personal, her body image. Hello, Helen. Introduce me to your entourage. Okay. Today I've rang my mum and my friend Chan, and he's just the absolute joy of our lives. And I just can't wait to marry him. So tell me about your wedding in general. It's going to be a bit of a fairy tale. I just want to be Cinderella for the day and pretty and elegant. My body has changed dramatically since being a mother. Every new mum has to pass through a natural phase of being uncertain about their own bodies, considering what a huge toll it takes to give birth. But when a new mom is months away from becoming a new bride, those self-doubts and uncertainties take up monstrous and mountainous proportions. Danielle has her hands full as she has the added response of finding the one dress which would not only speak to this bride's heart, but would also restore her own faith in herself as a woman. In the dressing room, stylist Danielle is having a proud moment of her own, putting Helen into a beautiful classic princess gown made lovingly to make even the most dismal of brides feel like a million bucks. Heart neck client, yes. you've got a really nice long train on this. This dress is a princess dress. I'm so excited to try this dress on. How are you feeling in this gown? I hate it. I hate the way I feel. I feel like I look fat. 
But the flat dismissive comment emerging from Helen's mouth have doused poor Danielle with a bucket of chilled water. Helen's rubbish on the dress has opened a floodgate of negativity coming out on the dress and it's obvious that this bride needs to march herself back to the changing rooms and put on something worth her time. Dress number two is a beautiful lacy mermaid cut design which would have had Helen running in the opposite direction had it been suggested to her. But once it's been put on her by the ever-professional Danielle, she is flummoxed with how well it is sitting on her voluptuous curves. See, this is why Danielle is a stylist while Helen is not. A hopeful and happy Helen is marching out for the dress showing, but the welcome she has received from her mom has soured the deal for her. To be concerned about fit in a fishtail, but I think Helen's going to like her figure more in this silhouette. It's dreadful. Really? Sorry. Dreadful. It's absolutely dreadful. dreadful. It just doesn't fit. It's you okay. do not look like a sausage it looks at all. Okay. I'm really shocked. It's making me look slim and it's giving me so much more confidence. It's nice. Do you feel like a bride? I definitely feel like a bride with this one. Slim round for me. Thank you. If mommy doesn't like it, there's no way this bride is going to fight for it. Like a good and beautiful daughter, she trusts her mother's instincts, which are telling her to trust her mother. The Sophia Tolly creation Danielle has Helen putting on is the complete opposite of the previous mermaid cut. Its beautiful sweetheart neckline sits on a fitted bodice, which is intricately worked with silver beads and stones. There's fine needlework going through the stones, which is a perfect complement to the flash and bling. Just so pretty. Could you see yourself walking down the aisle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. I actually like it. Do you like it, Mum? Yes, I'm, I'm even surprised that I like it. Don't just like it because I like it. This dress is absolutely beautiful. Just like a princess. It's amazing. It's the perfect amount of accessorizing to an otherwise completely simple, unembellished ivory full skirt flying in billowing falls to this bride's tippy toes. It's a beautiful piece and this bride is extremely pleased with what she's looking at in the mirror. But I'm not too keen on the top half without straps. Right, should we spin you round? Yes, please. Come back and look for a dress at another date. I'm really not body ready. I don't feel very confident and I don't feel very comfortable. No. No. Mum, it's just not happening no, up here, is it? No, doesn't do it any justice. But does mom agree? Well, it seems everyone is happy with how it's looking on the bride, but somehow Helen feels that it's missing something. Maybe add-on sleeves would make all the difference required? It seems today is just not Helen's day. I've learned a lot today on what looks good, what doesn't. People always say, you know when you put on that dress. I think that when I find the dress, I'm just gonna know. The day has not been completely wasted since it's brought her closer to an understanding of what looks good on her. A little sabbatical from dress shopping might do her a world of good and this bride is leaving the salon with plans of coming back another day. That's all we have for you folks. Join us next time.